I'm Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, hard talk with a matrix of newsmakers. At issue in this program, Angela Merkel victorious, headed for a third term as German chancellor, but weakened. Merkel's Christian Democrats took more than 40 percent in federal elections, but lost their coalition partner, the centrist Free Democrats. The most likely option, forming another so-called grand coalition with the Social Democrats, as in 2005 to 2009. But it promises to be difficult, as the SPD has been insisting on addressing the growing low-wage sector. What impact on the European Union? What about Germany's tough policy on bailouts of Eurozone members in distress in exchange for tough reform of their economies? Could it soften? Or, with a relatively strong showing by the Eurosceptic protest party Alternative for Germany, could that cause Merkel to become even tougher? Now, wired into this edition of the network is, in Dublin, Lucinda Creighton, vice president of the European People's Party, or EPP, which includes Merkel's uh, CDU-CSU. Here at the European Parliament in Brussels, Annie Podimata, a parliament vice president and a member of the Socialists and Democrats, or S&D. And also here at the Parliament, Sir Graham Watson, president of the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats for Europe Party, or ALDE. And he's a member of the European Parliament. Welcome to all of you and a question to all of you, starting with Lucinda. The alternative for Germany, that protest party, nearly made the 5% required to enter the Bundestag. How much could that affect the next government's policies toward Europe? Not too much, I think. I, I, I feel that there, there was a lot of um, speculation that alternative for, for Deutschland uh, would uh, reach the threshold and could in fact be sort of kingmakers after the elections in Germany. That hasn't materialised. So I think much more significant is the extraordinary uh, mandate that Angela Merkel and the CDU CSU have received for their, their third term in office. OK, but, uh, but Annie, don't you think that, that this new government is going to be looking over its shoulder at those Eurosceptics? Well, I think that, uh, I hope that uh, they will not be able to influence too much the next uh, German gov government's uh, orientation. The Eurosceptic parties in Europe have grown their influence because governments have not been up to the situation and they put all the blame for the crisis to Europe. Okay, Graham, the FDP was, is, is part of ALDE. They're out. There are also Eurosceptics who actually rose in this vote. Don't you think there's some kind of an orientation there that Merkel cannot ignore? I think undoubtedly we are seeing right across Europe populist and extremist parties gaining support. We're also seeing liberals losing. Now this shouldn't be a surprise. This has happened in every recession throughout history because if you are defending policies of open markets, if you are defending policies of people-to-people -people exchange, if you're defending tolerance, you have a hard time in a recession. But I think Angela Merkel is wise enough to resist it. Okay, Lucinda, do you think that a grand coalition, that being with the Social Democrats, that seems to be the most likely possibility with, uh, for Merkel, would that prevent tougher EU policy? Could it soften it? I'm not sure. I think that, um, that Angela Merkel um, has a huge amount of support for her approach to the euro crisis so far. Now, I know it has uh, in some cases been, been subject to cri criticism, but on the other hand, um, you know, her, her, um, her yeah. steady as she goes, uh, self-assured, certain approach, I think, has huge support in Germany. And I don't see um, a, a grand coalition veering hugely off that course, to be honest. Annie, what about the, the low-wage uh, sector that uh, Merkel is being uh, pressed to address by the SPD? Do you think there will be progress on that if there's a grand coalition? Well, yes, absolutely. I think that uh, if we move towards uh, a, a broad coalition with the participation of the SPD, I think that some uh, major uh, policies, including the lower wage, the social issues uh, in general, the more balanced approaches regarding the management okay. of the crisis have to be taken seriously into consideration. Okay, related to that, uh, 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 Graham, I, I'm, I'm hearing some inside talk that, that if the FDP had actually been, been softer on, on minimum wage, actually gone ahead with Merkel on that issue, they might still be in the parliament. Well, I, it's easy to say one thing or another made the difference. Perhaps liberals in some countries have supported minimum wages. Liberals in Germany, who've been perhaps more influenced by economic liberal ideas, have not. But I think the FDP needs to think long and hard about how it interprets liberalism and how it presents it to appeal to the electorate. 
Okay, uh, Lucinda, what about this idea of a Marshall Plan that the SPD had been pushing for? Is there any chance of that for Europe? I don't think so. I mean, the so-called creditor countries have obviously made significant resources available to countries that are currently in uh, bailout programmes, including my own country. Um, I think that obviously the repayment plans for those have to be sustainable. But the idea, I think, of borrowing borrowing more money in the Eurozone uh, to give free money is is not credible and it's not something that I think is, is likely to happen, no. Well, exactly. Annie, uh, people say a lot of things in campaigns and uh, do you think the SPD can really press a new government to accept uh, a Marshall Plan uh, for Europe? Does anybody have that money? Well, uh, uh, it's not, uh, the question is not to borrow more money into Europe. The question is, and the issue is, in my view, to invest in Europe. Europe needs investment, Europe needs uh, new jobs. We need, uh, clearly in Germany, a more Europe-oriented, a more European citizens-oriented government, taking okay. into consideration that Germany is a very influential country in Europe. Graham, any chance of a, of a Marshall Plan? What do you think? Well, I think to some extent we are doing some of the things the Marshall Plan did. There is a certain amount of investment going on and thankfully because we created the Euro and the European Central Bank, we have a strong central bank with deep pockets and as a result of having the Euro, we were not knocked for six by the collapse of Lehman Brothers back in 2008. Okay. All right. Uh, Lucinda, what about uh, the banking union that seems to have been put off uh, pending the German elections? Do you think we'll see a uh, a softening there that Germany might be a bit more uh, open to a banking union. Share, it's basically sharing risk among the EU members. Yeah, look, I think um, I think we have seen in the last 12 months that um, that Germany has responded and Angela Merkel has responded um, to the very obvious and real need for a banking union. And, you know, we, we've seen the first step, if you like, or the first building block with the creation of the single supervisory mechanism. Um, so hopefully now uh, we can really proceed uh, and uh, ensure that those those remaining steps, those remaining elements of banking union will be will be um, put in place as quickly as possible. Okay. I consider the banking union the most important institutional reform that has been that has taken place since the creation of the euro and i think that uh, uh, this is uh, an imperative policy that has to be put forward okay graham what do you think on banking union do you think we'll see progress quickly on that I'm sure we will see progress and I think the fact that Angela Merkel got such a resounding victory is likely to be ruling in a grand coalition will actually help us to move Europe forward. We have achieved a lot at European level in the last five years. We now have to make sure that we can offer the next generation a bright future. Okay, and what could this mean to all of you very quickly? What could this mean, the, the election outcome, for the European elections next year? The Alternative Deutschland, if they kept their same score, they'd get past the 3% that they need to get into the European Parliament. Lucinda. Look, I think, um, I think everybody is aware that in the European elections next year, um, the more extreme um, elements in European politics, both on the left and right, uh, are likely to make gains. And I think it's important um, that the approach which has been adopted by Angela Merkel and the CDU in Germany is followed in other member states. Very quickly, Annie, how worried are you and how are you going to respond to that? Well, I think that uh, we need to try and make some conclusions why there is this uh, growing lack of confidence and trust from European citizens towards Europe and European uh, institutions. And that's the most important challenge ahead of the European elections in 2014. I think, I think that we should change a little bit priorities and try to regain European citizens' confidence towards Europe. Okay, Graham, you've got the last word. My message to political parties is this. Don't let yourself get dragged onto the ground of the extremists. Defend what you are. Find better and more persuasive ways of persuading people why you believe what you believe. Thanks, Graham. That's all the time we've got for now. I'd like to thank our guests, Lucinda Creighton, Annie Podimata, and Sir Graham Watson. I'm Chris Burns, and until next time, thanks for connecting with The Network.